It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. I'm going to repeat that. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. There are a couple of YouTubers that's going through something. One is known by Brother Polite and the other one is Young Pharaoh. Brother Polite is being accused of molesting a 14-year-old girl. Young Pharaoh is losing his mind quite rapidly and he's extremely paranoid. The thing that these two people have in common is that not only they reject the Most High, but they say that they are God. And they even go as far as saying that the black woman is God. I'm going to repeat that first verse that I quoted that says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's easy to boast and brag on your accomplishments. Brag about how you are a self-made millionaire. How you curse the most high. And you worship the God of death and the underworld. You have all these satanic images in your videos. Even tatted on your body. And you wonder why you're losing your mind. Now there's people that may make fun, may rejoice, say aha, out of jealousy. Because this young man, young Pharaoh, has become a millionaire. So there are people out there that want to see him fall. They want to see his destruction or his ruin. I don't want to see that because... I like the young man. My only issue with young Pharaoh is the fact that he denounced and cursed the Most High. But it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Especially when I'm sitting there watching all of the sanity that you once had begin to start dissipating. He used to always start his videos with Peace, Peace Family. Now, in my own personal beliefs, this man is possessed. He channels of course, meditate. There's nothing wrong with meditation. But when you start channeling and, and, and inviting um, foreign spirits inside you, there's no telling where you may end up. Because once those spirits possessed you, you are now no longer in control of yourself, but you're being controlled and manipulated by foreign entities. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and I want to show you what happens when people decide to become God. People that reject the most high and put themselves in a position of deity. 
I want to read Isaiah, the 14th chapter, reading the 12th to the 15th verse. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thine, for thou hast said, in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit down upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. The 14th verse says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And in the 15th verse it says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. These two young men and it's not just these two young men, but these two young men are now being brought down to hell right before our very eyes. Losing their minds right before our very eyes. They have money. They have cars. They have jewelry. They have the things that they wanted. They have the women. And young Pharaoh even went as far as started putting bounties on the heads of individuals that don't do what he wants them to do or don't tell him what he wants to hear. So he threatens to put $50,000 on their head. This is how puffed up this individual has become. This is how puffed up this individual has become. There are certain people that cannot handle success. They can't handle wealth. They can't handle popularity. There are people that even use subscribers to fight their battles, to stalk and harass people. They may have a hundred grand, a hundred thousand followers, a million followers, but they will weaponize those followers to harass and stalk people online. But according to the 15th verse, it says, yet thou shall be brought down to hell because right now you think you are a God. You think you are powerful and you can't be stopped. Young Pharaoh believes that he's all powerful, the most powerful and successful person in this country. I want to read one more scripture to you. And listen, allow this to be an example. Allow this to to be a lesson to you. Whenever you put yourself in the position of God, you will be tested by God to see how powerful you are. And it's sad when you begin to start losing your mind, you lose all control of your entire being. Cursing out family members and loved ones. People that surround you, that support you. They flee. Want nothing to do with you. And the ones that do stay are there to use you for what you have. They are not your friends. I want to read a scripture taken from the book of Luke. The 10th chapter, reading the 16th 
to the 20th verse. And this is what Yeshua says. Now, for those of you that say that Yeshua is not real, that he's a fictitious character, this is for you. The so-called black conscious community, this is for you. The 16th verse reads, He that heareth me, better yet, he that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despise you, despise me. And he that despise me, despise him that sent me. So, if I come in the name of Christ and you listen to me, you're not just listening to me, but you're listening to Christ. And if you listen to Christ, you're listening to the Most High. The 17th verse says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, if you go back to the book of Isaiah, where it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And how Lucifer puffed himself up and began to start saying how he would lift his throne above the stars and be like the Most High. Well, this is Yeshua, Jesus, that's the same one that you say is fictitious, the same one that you say don't exist. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And I quite often say, there's people that had not been on this earth for uh, 30 years, but yet they have all this information about who and who don't exist and who never existed or who never walked this planet because they read some books that another human being wrote. You're taking the words of another human being, someone that you don't know, have never met, and more than likely got that same information from someone else. But now you've become so knowledgeable and wise that you have the authority or believe you have the authority to know who walked this earth when you can't even name the species of dinosaurs that were here before you without having to read books that another human being wrote. And I'm almost definite that there's creatures that's not named in those books that no human being has ever seen before. But yet you think you have knowledge. But here it is, the same man that you say don't exist and that never existed is telling you that he actually witnessed Satan fall from heaven. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And then in the 19th verse, it says, Behold, I give unto you power, in other words, authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'm going to repeat that and I'm going to make a quick comment on that verse. Because I know that there's some naysayers out there that are saying, well, I don't see that happening today. Where Christians or so-called people of Yah have power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy because it seems like so many Christians are being defeated by the enemies. 
They have no power. They're fruitless. But yet, according to this promise that Yeshua made, he said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. The 20th and final verse says, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. In other words, don't celebrate too quickly. There's no need to rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I'm going to read that 20th verse again. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. In other words, it's no big thing. There's nothing to brag about because spirits are subject to you. That doesn't make you anybody. Don't make you great. You're not a big man because the spirits are subject unto you. You think you're some great and powerful prophet from Oz. But he's saying, this is nothing to rejoice about. That the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice. Because your names are written in heaven. I'm going to read that last and final verse again. Because I really don't think you caught that. Notwithstanding. In this rejoice not. That the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Feedback. Tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.